So DC lost a hero today. Uh, Lieutenant Kevin McRae, a 24-year veteran of the D.C. Fire and Emergency Medical Service, passed away following a two-alarm fire on the 1300 block of 7th Street Northwest. That's at the intersection of 7th and O Streets in Northwest. At 8.10 this morning, units were dispatched to a fire on the, on the 9th and 10th floors of that building. Units arrived at 8.13, and Lieutenant McRae's crew was the first team to arrive and fought the fire on the ninth floor. It took approximately 50 minutes, 50 minutes to extinguish the fire. After the fire was put down, uh, Lieutenant McRae exited the building safely with his crew. He then collapsed on the scene. Paramedics started CPR immediately and transported Lieutenant McRae here to MedStar, where every effort was made to revive Lieutenant McRae. Sadly, Lieutenant McRae was pronounced dead shortly after 10 a.m. Lieutenant McRae is survived by his wife, Terry, three children, uh, and his mother. Lieutenant McRae joined the fire department as a member of Cadet Class 4 on July 31st, 1989. He was 44 years old. In July 2007, uh, Lieutenant McRae's cousin, firefighter James McRae, um, also passed away in the line of duty as a fire department employee. Today is a day to mourn the passing of the lieutenant and comfort members of Engine 6 who lost a brother and a leader. Lieutenant McRae is the 100th member of the department to perish in the line of duty. As a city, we take care of our own, we take care of our firefighters, and we will soon have details of how members of the public may support the McRae family. Another firefighter was transported um, for care here to MedStar and has since been released. Two civilians were also transported to area hospitals with non-life-threatening uh, injuries. We will have more details on residents who were dis displaced um, because of today's fire, but they are also um, receiving services from the American Red Cross. I am joined today by Council Member Kenyon McDuffie, City Administrator Rashad Young, Deputy City Administrator Kevin Donahue, and the Acting Fire Chief Gregory Dean. Uh, we will uh, hear from uh, Fire Chief Dean, um, and as well as MedStar's Jeff Dubin. Um, the Fire Chief will tell you a little bit more about the response to the fire, and uh, Dr. Dubin will be able to answer any questions related to um, care rendered to Lieutenant uh, McCray. Fire Chief. Thank you. We're here to support the McCray family. Our, uh, Lieutenant Kevin McCray was at, at a working fire this morning over on the 1300 block of 7th Street. The uh, fire went to a multiple alarm, two alarm fire, uh, two minutes after the crews arrived on scene. Lieutenant McCray and Engine 6 are the uh, first firefighters on the fire floor. They're responsible for putting out the fire. As they exited the building, Lieutenant McCray collapsed. And uh, we, the medics on scene were able to administer immediate care for him, as well as the doctors here at the hospital. We, as we go forward, the department will be doing an internal review of this, uh, of this event, as well as working with NIOSH and some of the other federal agencies to ensure that we do a full review and we get lessons learned from this event. Let me introduce Dr. Dublin. Hello, my name is Dr. Jeff Dubin. I'm the chair of the emergency department at MedStar Washington Hospital Center. And first off, I, on behalf of the hospital, the members of the emergency department, I'd just like to express our condolences for the family of Lieutenant McRae. Uh, everyone is so sorry to, to see this have happened to him. And as the mayor and chief just said, uh, unfortunately, Lieutenant McRae collapsed outside of the building. He was immediately provided care by the paramedics and the firefighters who were on scene. Uh, CPR was started immediately. He was transferred to our emergency department where we continue trying to save him, trying to resuscitate him. We used everything that we had. All the resources available were used and unfortunately, despite everything that we did, uh, Lieutenant McCray died unfortunately today. 
I also want to thank uh, Council Member Kenyon McDuffie, uh, who arrived to the hospital um, shortly after we did. Uh, to to support, of course, the McCray family, but also to speak um, for the council in his role as chairman of the oversight committee for the judiciary. Council member. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Uh, today's truly a sad day. Uh, it's a sad day for the entire McCray family. It's a sad day for the entire district. Uh, it's a sad day for the more than 2,000 brave men and women in our fire and EMS department. And it's a painful reminder of just how high the stakes are for those men and women. It's a painful reminder that every day that they go to work, they risk their lives to try to save others' lives. And I just want to make sure that we all remember that. I want to thank Lieutenant McCray for his years of dedicated service to the District of Columbia. I want to make sure that we all keep the McCray family and our thoughts and prayers. We'll take any questions. Mark? Yes, the family is uh, here. Uh, members of the fire department went to pick up uh, Lieutenant McCray's wife and mother. Uh, I was able to meet with them, of course. He has a brother was here and at least one of his children. Well, they're devastated, um, as is the, his other family, uh, which is the fire department and his crew. And uh, it's pretty shocking. And it's uh, compounded, I believe, because this family endured another in the line of duty death of New Lieutenant McCray's cousin in, in the not too distant past. Children, you know? I don't know their ages, I'm sorry. He has at least one who appeared to be adult son, but I think he also has smaller children. I'll go to Paul and then, then you. Yes? Oh. I'll let the chief address uh, anything we know about the fire. I've not had an opportunity to talk to the fire investigators yet. We've spent since... Uh, uh, Lieutenant McCray uh, died. We spent all our time with the family. I will do some follow-up for you, and our public information officer will get that information back to you. Engine 6 crew is here. Uh, they're here to support the family as well as we're taking care of them. We will backfill so that we put that engine back in service. Chief, can you tell us what happens next? It looks like you're getting ready for a dignified transfer with Lieutenant McCray. So traditionally what will happen is, is that they will uh, transport the body with a crew uh, that follows it. I'm not sure exactly, third day on the job, exactly how it works, but uh, traditionally we will give him a, uh, a, once they release the body, to take it to the coroner or to the, uh, or to, and then take it to the, um, um, to the uh, funeral home. So we'll work through those details. I don't have those right now. Could the doctor elaborate a little bit more on the cause of death? Well, I understand the medical examiner is involved, and so in terms of trying to think what the cause of death is, I think we'll have to wait for the medical examiner to, to have that, uh, to find that out. I will say that the way things look, we would call this a sudden death, which unfortunately affects, you know, four or 500,000 people in, in the United States every year. And uh, typically it is a heart problem, but you just don't know that until after the medical examiner does uh, due diligence and, and can give you the final cause. So it's just, uh, at this point, it's just postulating. We're just not sure. We'll have to wait. Was he showing any signs of life when he arrived here? You know, I, I, for the privacy of the family, I'd rather not divulge more medical details except for that he, you know, collapsed outside. And uh, when he arrived, we tried all we could to resuscitate him. Um, for, for sudden, when people suddenly collapse, that's also referred to as cardiac arrest, yes. So the medics on the scene were giving Sir. CPR initially? Correct. The paramedics on the, on the scene, from, from what we surmised, did everything that they could do. Um, they did the, the right thing immediately. They gave the right care for him. And unfortunately, despite all our efforts, unfortunately, for people who are the victims of sudden death, often cardiac arrest, despite everything we do, we oftentimes cannot bring them back. Some residents on the scene described this as public housing. Do you know if it's uh, public housing, affordable housing, subsidized housing, and what kind of fire? I, I can't. I can't answer. Maybe Chief can answer that. 
I, I don't believe is a property that belongs to the housing authority. I don't believe, but I will, we can double check that and confirm that for you. What type of injuries? You said two other civilians had minor injuries. Can you elaborate on what kind of injuries they had? Well, actually, we'll have to get back to you, including making sure um, we know which hospitals they were transported to and getting ready to come out here and brief you as soon as possible. Um, we don't have the, their condition yet, although we don't understand that anybody was transport, tr transported from the scene who had serious injuries other than uh, Lieutenant McRae. Can you talk at all about the protocol of, for the D.C. Fire Department for fighting a, you know, a high-rise fire like this? It, I know you're new on the job here, but... Um, no, he, he's not new to firefighting, right. as you know, 44 uh, years. And I know that the chief reported to the scene. Uh, it is a high-rise with significant fire coming um, from the upper floors, uh, which warranted the chief's uh, direct attention. So he can talk about that. So... The initial report came in as a, uh, uh, a fire in an apartment. Uh, uh, they called me. They said, hey, we've got a lot of smoke showing. We were able to see the smoke actually from headquarters. Uh, first couple days on the job it was a great opportunity just to see the firefighters and see them perform their tasks. It looked like a straight routine. Uh, they, uh, they entered through the lower floors to the firefighting floor. They also had ladders up to protect the exposures as well as to be able to escape the building if they needed to. Um, Everything was routine right up until uh, Lieutenant McRae exited the building and collapsed. I would like to also uh, make sure that I thank the hospital and Dr. Dubalin and those guys because they did an incredible job trying to work as long as they could to ensure this firefighter had every chance that he, had, that he could. And Chief, you were talking about a review that would be taking place. What are you going to be looking at when it comes to this review? And does that indicate maybe you're looking at the health of firefighters before they actually report to a fire? No, this review will actually look at the firefighting operations determine, uh, again, we're always looking at every fire to see what we can learn from the fire. We'll be getting statements from all the firefighters to see what happens. Anytime you have a firefighter death, you also invite in uh, the national agencies such as NIOSH to come in and, and, and also critique and say what happened, were there things that we should have done or could have done better. We're going to learn from that. And, and again, every time these happen, our goal is to make sure that we're looking at firefighter safety. Is there an official photograph of the lieutenant that you can release? We will uh, we'll work through our public information officer, and we will get you a photograph that we have. Thank you for being here and how sincerely um, mournful we are for this firefighter who was an uncommon firefighter. He's been on the job a long time. He rose through the ranks um, from a cadet. Uh, and he's mentored a lot of firefighters. So please keep um, our, our whole force in your thoughts and prayers because um, they've suffered a great loss. Thank you.